Okay, folks. Today, we're going over my uh, favorite rifle that I built. Um, basically, uh, just a couple things. Uh, we've had a lot of friends and uh, family asking uh, different uh, questions about what I'd recommend for like a home defense gun, things like that. Cannot highly recommend enough um, an AR-15. I think that's a really good option. A lot of people talk shotguns. They talk about uh, handguns, things like that. Handguns are great, um, obviously, for like everyday carry, as you saw. You know, I'm a big fan of that, but um, I'd rather have a rifle <laughs> if I can get to a rifle um, every time. There's zero exceptions to that, basically. Almost zero, okay? I would almost always, 99.9%, .9%, I'd rather have a rifle. Um, beautiful things about a rifle, you can go ahead and have 30 rounds in a mag, okay? So you've got a magazine, and then for anyone who's worried, clear, clear. If you can't see it, I can, don't worry. Um, the whole point being, um, and that's another thing, um, we're on safe, and this right here, that's your safety. You gotta have good, 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 very good, excellent. Um, control over that finger um, which we did not see in uh, that couple <laughs> a lot of people dubbed them uh, Ken and Karen basically been dubbed um, defending their home which you know that's a whole nother can of worms I mean like yeah they need some training um, you're not allowed to be pointing that thing at people unless you're actually in danger and then uh, for him he didn't do that but but you can just see the weapons handling it is severely lacking i mean i'm growing too i've got a long ways to go so if i make stupid mistakes feel free to point them out um i don't believe i will but you never know so point is uh this right here is a gun that i built on um, palmetto state armory highly recommend them um not that you can find anything right now um i went with a ar-15 uh, pistol build so i went with the pistol build um and uh the main thing with the pistol it's different once again we've shown we're clear we've got a pistol brace on the end. So you'll see back here, you've got the ability to take this apart, this Velcro stuff off, and you can go ahead and actually put it through your arm and use it as a brace. Um, this right here, it's not as good as a stock, but it legal wise, as far as ATF is currently concerned, you're able to cross over state lines, things like that with it. Whereas if you were using an actual short barrel rifle, which is what this is, if, if it, didn't have a pistol brace. Um, short barrel rifles, anything under 16 inches. Um, it's SBR for short. SBRs have to have a $200 tax stamp plus this waiting period process for it and all this. And I understand it can take six months to over a year sometimes, um, but usually I've heard six months um, at a minimum uh, to be able to go ahead and get that all approved and done before you're allowed to even have your gun um, or be able to have it built. So. This right here is 10 and a half inches, shoots 5.56, five, um, which means it can also shoot 223. Remember you can shoot, if you have a 5.56 five, barrel, you can shoot 5.56 five, or 223 ammo. If you have a 223 barrel, you can only shoot 223 out of it. Do not try to shoot 5.56 five, out of that. Not a good idea, not safe, and could have some bad, bad stuff happen potentially to either your gun or possibly you. So the way I've set this up really quick is um, got a SBA-3 for the uh, pistol brace. That's one that I like so far. I went ahead and installed a law tactical folder when I built this one so that I can go ahead and just pop the button here, fold it over, it gets really nice, neat and small. Um, it's a 10 and a half inch barrel. I wouldn't recommend going any shorter than that if you're shooting 5.56. Five, if you wanna go shorter, um, you're gonna probably wanna go with a 300 blackout. And you can probably get down, depending on your twist, I'm not gonna get into all that, but I would say I would probably keep it at seven and a half to nine and a half inches for for a 300 blackout is the ideal spot um i th believe that at nine inches you get a full powder burn on the on the 300 blackout ammo but um i understand they shoot just fine um even shorter barrels than seven and a half inch but i don't know enough to be able to say for sure if i would recommend that i just know that you can start chopping more and more off of it um yeah it gets a lot more compact but i don't know it's just I feel like it gets, it'll gets it get a little hard, at least for me. I'm only six feet tall, but you know, to be able to wield it the way that I would prefer to, um, like this one where I can go ahead and get, get out. I can go ahead and get in short here. I actually keep my stock out here, or not stock, pistol brace, 
and being able to go ahead and actually get on the angled foregrip up here, which I like. Um, you can't use a regular vertical foregrip on a pistol build because of ATF reasons. So um, you are able to use this, um, which I'm fine with. I actually like the angled foregrip. So I can go ahead and get out here. I can get a good pull back into the body, a little bit of an arm bend, nothing too crazy. Um, so I just really like the length on that for me uh, to each his own. Um, Aside from that, one of the things I am going to do, I am going to pop in one of the Radian um, charging handles. Um, they've been out of stock lately. So uh, just because with me having the 3X magnification there that can flip out of the way right here in front of the EOTech, um, I'm finding that even though I can get to it fine, I, I don't like the wear I'm seeing on it right now. And I'm thinking, you know what, maybe I want to go ahead and get something a little bit, little bit wider, something a little bit nicer for that. Um, it still won't stick out wider than the gun already is, so um, good there. Just finished putting up. We've got the pro sights. Um, a lot of people would be like, wait, what in the world are you doing putting here and here instead of here and back here with these for my backup irons? Well, I heard, um, who was it? I think it's Lucas at T-Rex Arms actually pointed this out. He's been trying it, and uh, so it's something I'm going to go ahead and give a shot at because I... <laughs> back here is a... You know, if I'm going to go ahead and do that, I have a problem now because I have to start picking where I'm going to go ahead and shift things. And it messes with my primary primary optics. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I decided, let's go ahead and give it a shot. I think that uh, what he pointed out made sense. And I was like, okay, let me give it, a, give it a try. So my next range trip will be the first time doing that. We'll see how that goes. But uh, so far, I'm liking the idea of it. It allows me to go ahead and get my pressure pad. Uh, further up too because I was having to have it back here a little bit just a little bit which is not quite as comfortable so I actually was able to move my my foregrip further up to back to where it is now and right here with my pressure pad easy to get to um, this right here is a lot smaller than the one that I had on here because I didn't have the pro series yet I had a pro series for the rear but they'd been out of stock where I was getting them for the front sight so that finally came in and I was able to go ahead and put it up here the Pro Series gave me about this much more. It gave me a, two more spaces on the uh, on the rail, and that allowed me to bump this back up to a more comfortable spot. I'm just running a Streamlight um, budget. Once again, you know, best bang for your buck. Um, I spare no, no expense on my like, EOTech. Pretty much the same thing with the Optic. Um, but then after that, it's like, you know, having things like a, the angled foregrip, I like that. It's not that bad. It's like 30 bucks. I do have a, the MOE Plus for the uh, Magpul um, just grip here, and it's nice. I like that. I like the, I don't know if it's a rubberized texture on it, something. It's just, it's really good with grip, comfortable, especially if you're shooting a lot. But the Streamlight here, this one I think will do 600 lumens. So nothing too crazy. I've got some that will do like 1200, um, but it also does a strobe, and uh, you know, it's just a, for like 130, 150 bucks, it's a, it's a good deal. Um, Surefire, of course, if you're going with top brand names, you know, they're, they're known for having the best stuff or at least the most reliable. Um, but so far I'm very happy with it. Um, nothing really else to say. I did decide I had I'm trying out having some, uh, spare batteries. So this one will run on two of the CR123s and then the EOTech runs on, uh, one of them. And, uh, so what I've been doing is I've got three spares here in the handle and, um, also an Allen wrench that covers covers the uh, EOTech site, um, as well as a couple other things on here. So, um, and then I put, a, you know, like the uh, microfiber cloths for your glasses and stuff. I put a, tore off a little bit of one of those, cut it, and popped that inside as well to help keep them from uh, jiggling around, things like that. And also made sure I was able to get everything out really easily. Um, so it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, if I'm out shooting or whatever, I don't want to have to deal with it. I mean, my range kit honestly has all that. We'll cover that in a future video, but I just was like, you know what? I got the space, you know, like I want to go ahead and try it out, see if I hate the weight difference. It's not much. It's probably maybe an ounce, um, but still worth, you know, considering. So I was like, let me just give it a shot. Better to see how I like it and try it than to just guess that I might not. Other than that, that's it. Um... Don't have much else to say, except I, I do like these kinds of setups. I think that 10 and a half inch barrel for 5.56, once again, is the lowest I would go. Excuse <clears throat> me. And uh, for uh, the 5.56 stuff. And uh, the reason I like the 10 and a half inch is because, I mean, God forbid you ever had to use this. Excuse me. <clears throat> Trying to clear my throat, but I'm not doing it. 
There we go. So God forbid you ever had to use something like this in a home defense situation, but if you did, you're in close quarters. Do you really want to go ahead? I mean, 16 inches isn't the hardest to go ahead and wield around corners, but you know, it's not something that as much as I enjoy, you know, practicing and training and stuff, uh, I'm not a professional at this stuff. I need every advantage I can have. So a 10 and a half inch barrel allows me to be able to be a little more forgiving getting around corners. And even the guys that I'm learning from and hearing from on this stuff, they are almost all going SBR. Um, they've gone through, you know, tax approval and stuff like that. So they've got actual SBRs versus just the pistol. But um, a lot of the regular day guys are going pistols as well. And even some of the guys who have SBRs are going pistols too, because um, that's another thing I'm, don't know if I finished touching on that was the SBR not only do you have to go through the tax stamp process which costs a couple hundred bucks more and the approval and all of that and waiting period but on top of it if you're traveling state to state you have to have permission for every state that you travel through so if I drive from here to California every state I go through I gotta have well technically I can't take it to California so that's <laughs> some other state on the west coast where if there's a west coast state that's good um, we'll take Arkansas or Texas, you know, something like that. Um, if you go out there, and I got family out there, so if I go out there to visit, and I wanted to go ahead and take take a rifle with for us to shoot, whatever, this is a good one to carry because I don't have to have permission for going through every state line and where I end up. Whereas if I have an SBR, I have to have permission for every state that I pass through as well as the state that I end in. Um, and I don't know, it might not be that hard to get, but I have not had to deal with it. I don't have any SBRs um, yet. It's not something that I decided to put the initial um, energy and effort into. Um, probably one of these days I will, but um, at the moment I don't have any plans to build any SBRs or to um, uh, purchase any. So that being said, it's a. Uh, I really enjoyed this one so far. I've been uh, continuing to play around with stuff, trying to go with uh, going with something that I really like, and uh, had a lot of rounds through it. A lot of fun to shoot. I'll show you a uh, good way to save money on these two is uh, the CMMG um, conversion kit. And you can go ahead and shoot 22 long rifle out of this instead of having to shoot your 5.56 or in this case 5.56 or 223 rounds. Um, long story short, you got a 30 round mag. This right here, if I shoot this one 30 round mag at good prices, what 30 cents a round, that's nine bucks, okay, for 5.56, okay, or two. You're gonna get, you know, like, I think best deals I've seen down to 27 28 cents but uh, that being said I would uh, highly recommend the 22 because I typically pay about 3.8 to 4.2 cents per round so the same same 30 rounds even though it's 25 round mags but when you do the math 30 rounds at about four cents that's a dollar 20 versus nine bucks each mag okay big difference um, so dollar twenty for thirty rounds of twenty two or nine bucks, and then that's the other thing too about the three hundred blackout. If you decided to go the three hundred blackout route, that's going to run you seventy five cents to a dollar per round. Okay, um, you typically your best price for shooting ammo. Once again, this isn't defensive ammo. Just buy the expensive stuff for defensive ammo, the good stuff. But that being said, uh, last time I checked this recently, the best prices you can find on that is usually about twenty two dollars and fifty cents for thirty rounds. Um, and that's not how you buy them. That's just, I'm looking at what I shoot. So the downside of the three, the upside of the 300 blackout too, is your mags. These mags, you know, like I like the Magpul Gen 2s, um, about 12 bucks each, but these mags will actually run those same, uh, bullets. You just don't want to accidentally mix up, uh, you know, do you have a five, five, six, uh, in there and then pop it into, you know, 300 blackout or 300 blackout and into your five, five, six barrel. That'd be bad. Um, so that a lot of guys color code those, they'll go ahead and maybe take different duct tape or some, paint them, um, or even just buy different color mags for the 300 blackout versus their 556 stuff. Um, for me, if I do the 300 blackout, I will probably do that. I will, all of my mags that I've got so far, even though it's nice cause I've got so many, but what I might start doing is in the future is getting some 556 mags, which run the 300 blackout, these gen twos are really nice and I'll probably go ahead and get a different color, maybe like the tan, and that way I don't ever have to worry about that down the road. We'll see though. I'm not too worried about it personally, but you know, why not? Little little things make a big difference in the long run. But yeah, going back to this whole idea of ammo costs, you know, like if you wanna go ahead and shoot, and you wanna go out and shoot, you know, let's say a 100 rounds a week or, or 90 rounds for the sake of math with three mags, you know, 27 bucks versus 360. That's a big difference. 
adds up quick. Um, for me, when I'm at the range, I probably go through uh, 300 rounds lately. It's not too crazy, but once again, I'm shooting 22 long rifle. So it's a lot cheaper. 300 rounds, once again, I mean, that, another example, $90 with this stuff or $11.20, I think, or no, $10, $12, something like that. Dollar twenty times ten, so twelve dollars. There you go. Twelve bucks versus ninety bucks, and so if you're doing that once a week, it adds up quick. Um, so the CMMG upper kit, I'll do a video on that, and that costs like two hundred ish, give or take, if it's on sale. I think I got mine on sale for like one hundred seventy, um, but it uh, doesn't take long to go ahead and get all of that money back. Obviously, if you're shooting, especially if you're shooting regularly. Um, yeah, other than that, oh, and this is a Vortex magnifier. I like it. So far, it's been pretty good. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. That way, I put this all in one vid. I think that's it. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments. And I got to go to the gym, as you can probably tell. This is, once again, this is day three. I want to make sure today I work again in the evening. And yesterday, I ended up not posting until finally midnight when I got home and got everything knocked out. So I was like, you know what? I got to make sure this is done before I leave. And if I miss out on a few minutes at the gym, as much as I don't want to, this is more important. Stick to it. Build that habit. Okay. Hope everyone has a good one. I'll catch you tomorrow.